Now, NASA and Lockheed Martin have unveiled what they call the next generation of supersonic aircraft. The makers say the experimental plane combines supersonic travel with low noise. The public got the first glimpse of the new X-59 research plane at Lockheed Martin's design center in California. The manufacturers say it will break the sound barrier and stay no louder than a car door closing. The last supersonic commercial aircraft, Concorde, stopped flying more than 20 years ago because it was banned from flying over urban centers as it was too loud. The X-59 Quest, short for quiet supersonic technology, an airplane that could lead to a new generation of faster-than-sound airliners. The sun set on the previous generation over 20 years ago with the final flight of the Concorde, which has since been relegated to museums. The Franco-British ultra-fast passenger plane was always too expensive to operate, but that wasn't its biggest problem. Aircraft generate pressure waves in the air, kind of like ripples in water, that propagate away from them at the speed of sound, over 1,200 kilometers an hour. When a supersonic plane hits or exceeds that speed, the pressure waves compress and merge into shock waves. These are perceived by people on the ground when the plane passes over as a loud thunderclap of sound, called a sonic boom. NASA and aerospace company Lockheed Martin have been working on the X-59 since 2016. It's an experimental plane able to fly faster than sound that doesn't blast the ground with unwanted noise. Using models and new technologies, the company's engineers came up with a design that minimizes the boom after the plane crosses the sound barrier. Only smaller waves reach the ground, making only as much noise, its makers say, as a car door thudding shut. The X-59 design still has to go through rigorous testing. Its developers are also planning trips over population centers to see how people perceive its sonic footprint. A first flight is slated for later this year. If the plane passes those tests, it could one day make high-speed flight quiet enough to be a feasible possibility for passenger planes. Joining me now is Keith Cowing. He's a journalist and former NASA employee. He edits nasawatch.com. It's good to see you again, Keith. I wanted to ask you, what are you most excited about with this new supersonic aircraft? Well, I lived near Dulles Airport, and back in the day, I remember the Concorde leaving at 4 o'clock three times a week. It was loud. And, you know, some people always say, well, why do we need another one of these? We got rid of the, uh, the Concorde because it didn't work. Well, the issue with Concorde was that it was loud, and it could only fly across oceans. So right off the bat, you're limiting the ability of a supersonic aircraft to do anything commercial. What this aircraft does is it allows hopefully the shape, and that's what, you know, you look at anything that flies, it's the shape and how that thing moves through the air that creates these sonic booms, or in this case, doesn't. And of course, you may say, well, it doesn't look very green. Well, it's, again, it's the shape of the aircraft. You may have the same sort of shape that the X-59 has that could be powered by hydrogen or even electric. So that, that's what's exciting, is that we're finally figuring out how to do the fast thing without breaking everybody's eardrums. So you said this one was more viable commercially. Does that mean we can see passengers on this plane soon? Well, this, obviously, you'd have to make scale it up, but there's already several countries that are waiting eagerly for this information because they are looking at their next sort of way of, you know, jumping ahead to do supersonic. And the thing with NASA is NASA is a government agency that's designed to push the envelope, pun intended, and, and figure out how to do these difficult things and then hand it off to the private sector to say, okay, we figured it out. Now go do something more interesting with it. So right now it's too small, but you said these other makers can make it bigger and more commercially viable. Yeah, well, usually you start like that. You start with something little like this in an air tunnel, then a wind tunnel, then you make it bigger and bigger. And now they have something that a pilot can fly. And if it shows that indeed they're going to fly it around the country and have people say, well, did you hear it? And once they've done that test, they'll go back and say, all right, here's the base. Here's what we learned. And here's how the aircraft industry can then say, well, thank you. And then they can figure out how to make it bigger so that, you know, a whole bunch of us can fly inside one of them. 
All that sounds very exciting and hopefully we can be taking that flight soon then. Thank you so much as always. Keith Coving from nasawatch.com. My pleasure.